so when you did the kitchen exhibition, what arts did you, what, what works did you have? This is the bridge conversation, we're really on a yeah. bridge here. Yeah, I have a bridge. <laughs> so um, the kitchen exhibition in the center was an altar, a kitchen altar of a fish device because I never cooked and okay. I still never cook. Let's go for breakfast, you know, out. And, and so the kitchen is the place where my books were. And so the fish device wanted to kind of bring the kitchen back to the kitchen, mm. to give the kitchen back to the kitchen. They eliminated my books and put them in somewhere else in the apartment. And they brought in this oversized food food supply. So five liters of ketchup, five kilograms of noodle, you know, five five kilograms of cornichon, you know, uh, all kinds of different things. And, and lots of chocomus, uh, which actually the only thing we ate because it, it was sort of ready to go. Uh, and all these ingredients were sort of, you know, um, put in the, uh, in the kitchen cupboard and so the kitchen cupboard was open like an altar mm -hmm. piece with the two you know, doors open mm -hmm. and uh, it was a little bit this experience like when you as a child you know everything seems oversized because you're small and the world is big mm -hmm. and sort of we felt like all of a sudden back to this idea how the kitchen actually was when we were small mm -hmm. because these food packages seemed very big and mm -hmm. actually these were very big because the kind of restaurant food supply then we had at the sort of place where usually one would have the garbage there was a projection of a candle of Christian Boltanski mm -hmm. so a little miracle occurred Boltanski said you know like Robert Musil art appear where we expected at least. Mm -hmm. Then the sink was doubled, that was sort of almost like a double take moment because yeah. you sort of saw the sink but then you saw the sink was slightly shifted mm -hmm. and with thins and that was basically Richard Ventos' piece which also gave the exhibition the title. I mean the idea was also that every single aspect of the show, even the structural elements like the title, the exhibition mm -hmm. photography, mm -hmm. the display were all invented by artists so mm -hmm. um, I didn't have money for exhibition photography so uh, Fishley Weiss actually took all the photographs yeah. so all the documentation, the so, official so you documentation have, you have the documentation it's got it photographs exists. and all the official photographs are actually um, uh, by Fishley Weiss and then Richard Ventos gave not only uh, the show the title but he also gave the title to the book and that was basically World Soup World, World Soup, Soup. Mm -hmm. is the title of the publication and, then uh, and the title of the exhibition and of the exhibition we had you know, Hans-Peter Feldman he mm -hmm. decided that he wanted actually to do an exhibition within the exhibition it's like a Russian matrushka yeah. so he used the fridge was an exhibition uh, in the fridge and uh, he, uh, the fridge obviously was also empty yeah, because okay. I don't cook uh, and so in the fridge he put marble eggs and feathers okay but um, but it happened that separate time from uh, from fish and bice when they use uh, the fridge or no fish and bice they, they never use the fridge they use the altar they use the cupboard ah, the cupboard okay, uh, okay above okay. the sink there okay, is this okay. cupboard and it's, yeah, it's yeah. a bit like in the Sir John Zones Museum yeah, yeah, yeah. when in the Sir John Zones Museum they open <laughs> the wings <laughs> and behind you painting it's a very paintings. painterly okay. exhibition display feature so they use it basically the kitchen Which is cupboard also kind of as a display yeah, feature yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. I think we need to speak very fast because both yeah, you yeah. and I speak very fast so this yeah. is actually yeah. a, a bridge conversation <laughs> at full speed we also can say that there was uh, uh, Roman Signos you know uh, uh, small uh, fire so mm -hmm. that was a uh, you know piece which was on the floor and then there was also a drawing by uh, uh, Frédéric Bouliboisbre which was basically the coffee and the rose it was uh, a rose was a flower and the coffee for the early morning sort of ritual mm. um, and then Paul Amonjet decided that he wanted to again not exhibit in the kitchen so we had two exhibitions in the exhibition we had Hans Peter Feynman in the fridge mm. and Paul Amonjet in the toilet Paul okay. Amonjet extended the kitchen ah, so you had the toilet exhibition we were thinking you know uh, and then was Pefkan also with actually kitchen objects which were wired you know that were sort of uh, surrounded by metallic wire and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and no longer accessible so that was somehow um, the idea of you know taking away a certain degree of functionality whilst actually the kitchen potentially could still be activated as a kitchen it potentially still functioned actually mm -hmm. actually more than ever before mm -hmm. because the books were gone uh, and then we can also and, and say now you had food also we had exactly and there were 29 visitors over three three and a half months so <laughs> it uh, and it became a room the idea was very much that you know that we, we, we didn't have uh, that, that was in, in Zurich or in uh, uh, it was in St. Gallen at the, in this university town where I studied at HSK and uh, I was in my student flat and mm. uh, uh, basically also one can say that these 29 visitors, you know, they obviously told other friends, so it was more like the idea really that the exhibition mm -hmm. traveled through rumors, we didn't have a press release. Mm -hmm. But what we did do is obviously this publication, the and idea, you, you, I always believed that, you know, there mm -hmm. needs to be a publication mm -hmm. for an exhibition to travel through time. Mm -hmm. And so we spoke to Walter Koenig and Octagon at that time and we did this publication, which is a bit like a, a little box. Mm -hmm. And I took a photograph of the apartment from outside and so one saw the kitchen and that photograph became the sort of wrapping paper mm -hmm. of the publication okay. in a yellow envelope. Mm -hmm. And then within, there is basically each artist has their own kind of artist book. because mm -hmm. I was fascinated by this idea that the catalog is actually an extension of the exhibition mm -hmm. I was thinking if only 29 people saw the show many many more thousand people can actually see it mm -hmm. through the catalog right. if the catalog is not only just the documentation but if the catalog renders a certain exhibition possibility yeah. I was thinking of Duchamp's you know part of the museum mm -hmm. and so we had uh, Hans-Peter Feldman do a little book of uh, of all kinds of kitchen tools and it, it has no name on it it's just called catalog mm -hmm. and people have to have a guess that it is Feldman mm -hmm. but obviously then one recognizes the list as a kind of a Feldmanian kind of picture book um, Christian Boltanski did a little kitchen you know artist book uh, 
about food and plates and kind of like image models. So it was um, the, the, the catalog was different than the exhibition. It was very an ex different because extension each artist of that. did their own publication within the publication. It was so, a, so it was an ex edition. exhibition within the catalog. Exactly, and, uh, and, and it was about 500 copies. And so Fischli mm -hmm. Bart, for example, took a brochure of which we find in the local supermarket in Switzerland at Coop, mm -hmm. C O O P, a sort of a cooperative yeah, supermarket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would have all kinds of things on sale, you know, special offers, ham reduced at 10% on Wednesdays, and, you know, maybe special cheese offers and stuff mm -hmm. like that, food, all kinds of other things. And they uh, uh, reprinted in a facsimile these special offers, you know, from the co-op, uh, so that it's kind of like, uh, uh, I mean, it's printed. It's not a ready-made, but it's a reprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we had Richard Ventos, who at that time was obviously pre-digital photography. He used to, once he brought the, the films to be developed at the lab, and then we would get back the negatives mm. and, and little printouts, 9 on 13. And so Richard Ventos actually put in an envelope with these little printouts that actually you'd have as a reader the impression that the artist had forgotten the originals in the mm. book. Mm. So that was another kind of, you know, um, shift of, of expectation. Uh, and that became this sort of publication which one can open and one can open the little yellow box, the wrapping paper of the house and then have all these elements pop up and sort of have one's own kitchen exhibition. I thought whoever has that publication called World Super, I mean, now it's difficult to find it, mm. but you know, the idea would be that it sort of disseminates and carries a yeah. kitchen show into everybody's home. And, and you, could, you could exhibit it in your own, in your own kitchen exactly. again. How old were you and what year was it? Um, it was in uh, 1991. I mean, I started to be in art or to be with art. As Gilbert and George told me, to be without is all we ask. I started to be without, uh, without, and I started to think that to be without is all I wanted it to be. Sort of like when I was 16, 17, and then I went on a long grand tour, an inner grand tour and an outer grand tour, and uh, took the night trains, you know, for many years and traveled permanently, made studio visits, mm -hmm. and, and saw lots of lots of exhibitions. But that took about five or six years. It was a very slow process, mm -hmm. paradoxically, and it's sort of, and it's only after five, six years that suddenly in 1991 I kind of felt ready to do my first exhibition. And then obviously, you know, uh, from that onwards, things accelerated and the kitchen show led to the monastery show. And the monastery show led to an exhibition on the peak of a mountain. The peak of the mountain exhibition led to the Gerhard Richter show mm. in, you know, in Sils, Sils Maria. The, the, the mountain show was with Karo Nidera, the exhibition, you know, in the monastery library with Christian Boltanski. With Gerhard Richter in Sils Maria, we showed his, you know, homage to Nietzsche. His overpainted photographs of mountains, you know, in the Enga team. And uh, little by little, that all led down to the Museum Robert Walz, which is a museum, it's a hero of mine and a hero of many artists. Yeah, of I mean, Dominic Dominic Gonzalez, yeah, yeah. Foster, for example, was our first show in Switzerland. We invited artists to exhibit in this little between in the restaurant where Robert Walz would always go on his famous walks. And you know what? We've now actually arrived. Arrived. The bridge is gone. The bridge is gone, and we're arriving to. We're here in Miami, and we're using our time in between to uh, do a bit of prehistory of uh, exhibitions. This was all about the kitchen exhibition and I'm Pablo Leon de la Barra and we're here in Miami. Here is uh, Jessica, our uh, conductor from Chile. And it has only just begun. And it's only just begun. Behind we have uh, the roofs. It's Mr. and Mrs. Roof. One of those rare occasions that are actually in the same car. In the same car. Thank you everyone. Goodbye.